I've loved gaming since I was young. My first memories of it was playing on my dad's N64, struggling with a great decoratory, or exploring the island of Woohoo on our first Wii. Games have easily shaped my life and have definitely influenced how I see the world. And I could certainly spend hours talking about all the games I've played. But I'm on a limit, and I'm not a writer, so I'll encapsulate a single month. On a cold December afternoon last year, I engaged in a yearly pilgrimage to watch a couple of British plonkers watch and sing cats. It's become a yearly tradition for me and many people on the internet, as it signifies the start of a brilliant charity event known as Jingle Jam. When you donate to the stream, you get a bundle of games. They don't reveal the list of games until the day, so everybody is equally surprised when it's announced. And as I was going through the games this year, one of them caught my eye. The first tree. It became the first game I downloaded from the pack, and without thought, I just started playing it. It's an indie title which has gone to much acclaim. Following the dreamlike world where Fox is searching for a family. For the two short hours I played it, I was transported into this world. Feeling really sad whenever I'd find a dead pup. It's simple and explorative nature. It's only elevated by the use of music. Every piece is somber, mournful, yet it's overpowered by the sounds of hope. So when the fox finally leaves the dream world and joins us in reality, the climax of the music it feels earned. The game was incredibly simple by all means. Go to different points to find clues to move on, but the ongoing narrative of the protagonist and his wife gives deeper meaning to every unrelated clue you dig up, which is why when we finally play as the protagonist, it feels earned. I've spent the entire time writing this, listening to the soundtrack, because it's just so lovely. And when I say that this game is simple, I don't mean that as an insult. In fact, I think this works in its favour. In its two hours run time, it gets a lot done, every moment feels deserving and nothing is ever unnecessary. You get to connect with characters more with each moment and you start to connect to this son and his wishes to get to know his father better. I'm lucky I've never lost someone I truly loved. Come close a couple times, but nothing that's ever impacted me yet. I feel like I've really got to know this father through this story and when you find out he's died you just, your heart shatters. I don't think my pain would ever amount to what someone who's actually gone through loss uh, feels like but it does help me put things into perspective. The first tree wasn't the only game from the bundle that got me talking and while I can certainly not do them justice in this short video I will find time to go back and discuss them in more depth. Taking a completely different tone, I ended up falling in love with Murder by Numbers. Murder by Numbers is a Phoenix Wright S detective game where you play TV actress Ona Mizari and her robot scout. Through many unfortunate circumstances, you find yourself involved in four different murder cases while also trying to help scout recover their memories. To find a clue, you need to solve the pickles of it, which often aren't in the most detail. And I'm not going to say I've become a master at Picross, but after 25 hours, you tend to get a bit better. And that's mostly due to how the game functions. They've got a brilliant system for helping you players. You're never made to feel like it's a bad thing to use these helps. I mean, certainly you get more points if you don't, but you still have done the Picross, you've still solved the clue. And anyone who knows me well will know that's something that I can't do. I really don't like asking people for help, and I want to be as self-sufficient as I can. It's why I have a lot of trouble with completing simple tasks. Because I'm too proud to say that I'm doing something wrong, or that it's got unmanageable at this point. As well as finding evidence, you can go about some of these crimes the old-fashioned way, asking the right questions. Every character you meet has their own personality, which is shown off really well in this 2D static image gameplay, so I know that Casey will always be supportive of Rosie Loves, or the detective will be stern but kind. Each case is linked by the overarching narrative of Scout, with the final case, Scout's Honor, allowing us to finally understand how we ended up in this position. We lose friends and find enemies. It's a fitting conclusion to a 20-hour narrative. 
before you even start the game, you're introduced to all the NPCs for an animated intro. This brings to life some of the brilliant scenes from in the game, and a couple that are brand new. It really shows the love that the kids have for their project, and while I'd love to play it here, don't fancy getting Coffee Struck, so I will link it in the description, and I implore you to go watch it yourself. And finally, before your eyes, a game talk to death. I'll keep my thoughts on this brief, as many other people who have done this game justice, but I can only talk about the basis of it all, and also not in as much detail. Before Your Eyes is certainly the most innovative game in this list for its use of just a mouse and a camera. Or just a mouse. You follow the life of Benjamin Brin. Every time you blink, you move time forward in his life. You present your story to a fisherman who can get you into heaven, and you make the choices that will ultimately affect their life. It's a solid reminder of what we have and how important our day-to-day -day decisions are, but how sometimes those decisions aren't made by us and we just need to accept it. It's a sentiment that I struggle with a lot these days. I find myself often mourning events I never got to experience because of factors outside my control. I didn't get onto the next jamboree or something got cancelled because of Covid. It is a really sad mindset to get into, and it's one I struggle with constantly. I'm not going to say this game fixed all my problems, but it did help me just take a step back and look at where I am and who I have around me. I can easily say that each of these games have left a mark on me in small ways. First Tree taught me I should never stop exploring. Sometimes I'll find something I don't like, but there's always going to be really important discoveries and beautiful views. Murder by Numbers shows me that I do need help sometimes and I shouldn't be afraid to ask for it. I should always be offering my help to other people. Finally, Before Your Eyes reminded me that I need to live in the moment because I never know what will pass me by. The past has happened, but I still have a chance at my future. I do have to end this here though, because it was supposed to be a very different video with a couple of interviews and other boring stuff, and was also supposed to be about three minutes long. Here I am, minute seven. With any luck, you'll hear from me again. And I'll tell you about these games a bit more, or something new I've got into. You've all been wonderful, so thank you for sticking with me, and hopefully we'll meet again soon.